I've got a clicker. Right, so uh, hi everybody. Um, so that's me. Um, so my, my bag is, uh, I'm, I'm less um, UX focused actually. My, my bag, thank you. I will. <laughs> Stand here. This, this is ideal for the camera. Stand here. Yeah, right, just about there. Right. <laughs> so, um, so I, I tend to talk about uh, agile uh, and a bit about lead, but uh, in the context of uh, much sort of broader stuff, really, um, like organisational structures and uh, how companies do stuff. And uh, my my big thing, I suppose, is really about how um, sort of philosophies and principles of agile can, can actually just go beyond and and the kind of learnings uh, for the for the much broader context of what organisations do. And just about every company wants to be more agile, but talk a good game and, and then don't really change much of the fundamental stuff. So uh, Gary Kasparov, yeah, what's the relevance of uh, him? It's a good place to start, though, isn't it? Um, so uh, th this quote, I think, is, uh, is, uh, is, is the relevance, really. So um, I like it because it talks, um, I think, about one of the fundamental problems. My background is actually in big companies. So I, I've uh, worked for many years in uh, big media organisations. And uh, you know, chess, like business, is balanced between the mundane and the unthinkable. Yeah, that, to me, speaks to the kind of really big challenge, I think, around innovation in companies, is how do you uh, continue to do the business as usual stuff and get incrementally better at what you're doing and deliver against short-term targets whilst also doing the kind of uh, potentially disruptive stuff and, cr and creating enough space within companies to do that. And uh, maybe even creating business models which are, will disrupt your main business model and trying to manage two competing business models in a business is a very challenging thing to do. But uh, to my mind, I, th I think there's really interesting kind of um, examples around now of companies who are, who are doing some interesting things around this kind of space, like labs and incubators and uh, you know, companies like GifGaf for O2 and um, Quote Me Happy for Aviva, you know, little sort of uh, startup companies within bigger companies, if you like. But um, for me, uh, it's also about how you could embed agility and innovation into the culture of what you do as an organisation. And um, this is one of my favourite examples, there's, there's many, but um, uh, Intuit. Intuit is obviously a software business, but um, been around for a long time. Yeah? They call themselves like a, the 30-year-old startup. Um, but I, I like the 70-20-10 approach. And 70-20-10 is something I talk about quite a lot in lots of different contexts, really. But this is how they talk about 70 20 10. So it's, it's a way of thinking about resourcing and focus. Uh, so 70% is on your kind of core, oldest products, your cash cows, if you like. That's like your rowing team. Yeah, but 20% of your resource and focus should be on your kind of white water rafters. So these are the kind of you know, young or mid kind of stage uh, products. And your, your role there, your KPI is, is very sort of different. Uh, but the 10% is embedding agility in your know, innovation into everything that you do. So this is like you're diving for sunken treasure. Yeah? And this is a, a way of actually um, developing new ideas uh, within a company you know, and accepting failure. Everybody talks about failure, but you know, still large companies are very um, unaccepting of failure, uh, generally in my experience. So embedding innovation through a model like that, I think, is a really smart thing. Second thing is, is structures. Now, interestingly, um, structures get talked about very little when people talk about agility and wanting to be more agile across an organisation. And I know structures within agile development and, and within tech teams is, is a really key part of what, what, how you do that. So I think it's an interesting kind of parallel. And, and the Spotify example here, there's a, there's a great paper, if you haven't seen it, by Henrik and Anders, if you Google it, uh, you can find it. Talk about the way in which they were structured. This is back in 2012, so it's probably changed since then. But I really like this because they talk about this idea of uh, tribes, chapters, squads and guilds. You know, it sounds quite medieval, doesn't it? But um, so the, the sort of defining kind of characteristic of this, instead of uh, organising vertically around disciplines, like companies are very good at siloing, aren't they, different functions, uh, their kind of defining thing is uh, vertical organisation around squads, you know, the classic sort of Amazon two pizza team, you know, your small, nimble, agile, multidisciplinary team, but they're focused around product areas. So it's product is the organising principle here. Uh, they gather those squads together in tribes, you know, these are areas which are related by strategy or by product. Uh, but I like the combination of that with the horizontal bit, yeah? so the chapters. So this is people who specialise in a particular discipline like UX and so on. So you don't lose any of that uh, you know, cross, uh, the, the kind of disciplinary expertise that you need to build over time. Uh, so it's like a matrix organisation turned on its side, I think. Yeah? And then you've got this kind of interesting idea of guilds. So this is people with a kind of community of interest, like Agile, uh, for example. Uh, going across the organisation. So combining that sort of uh, vertical with horizontal works 
Uh, a person can be a, a member of many different groups here, but also you can uh, disband squads, create squads in a very flexible way. So my question is really, why not uh, think about that as a, an organising principle for not just technology teams, but also for wider business and thinking about the way in which you organise lots of different teams. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.